Hey everyone, I know it's been a while since we've made a van video on this channel. Today's video is going to be all about our van's 800 watt fully solar electrical system. At this point, we've been living in our van for almost two years full time. And because of our fully off grid solar setup, we haven't had to pay for electricity propane or water in that entire time. We have a pretty robust electrical system for a van. It has 800 watts of solar, a 700 amp hour AGM battery bank, and a 3000 watt inverter. And even that isn't enough for our needs sometimes, but I'll touch more on that at the end of the video. I know 800 watts sounds like a lot. And even if you aren't planning on building such a large solar system in your van, this video should still be really informative for you because we're going to take you into our daily activities in the van, like cooking a meal, or heating hot water for our shower and show you exactly how many amp hours of battery that takes. Now, if you are interested in our exact electrical system, we've created an electrical diagram of each piece and all the wires needed to connect it. Every piece is clickable and you can download this resource from the link in the description below. It's totally free and there's an optional donation button if you found our resources helpful. We appreciate you checking it out either way. Now bear with me for a few minutes while I go into the really technical details of our build. So first of all, why do we need 800 watts and a ginormous 700 amp hour battery bank? Well, those numbers aren't as big as they seem. First of all, we really in real world situations only see up to about 600 watts of output from our 800 watts of panels. And as you probably know, you can only use half of the rated amp hours of an AGM battery so our 700 amp hours is actually only 350 usable amp hours. Since like we said, our van doesn't use any propane, all of our systems and appliances are powered with electricity from our battery bank. The largest item is definitely our dual radiant stovetop, and that comes in at about 2700 watts. And I'll talk more about that uh, in a minute here when I cook a meal. But uh, we had to size our inverter based on that. So our inverter is 3000 watts, and what you need to make sure if you have a 3000 watt inverter, it can pull at least 250 amps from your batteries. So you need to make sure that the batteries you get, whether they're AGM or lithium, can handle a 250 amp discharge at any given time. For batteries, we're using two 350 amp hour 12 volt batteries from VMAX brand. And we bought these at continuousresources.com. Unfortunately, these 350 amp hour batteries are discontinued, but VMAX now makes a 310 amp hour version. And it's really the cheapest and largest 12 volt AGM battery that we can find on the market. You can get 5% off these batteries at continuousresources.com if you use our code ADVENTURE5. And for two batteries, that equals $65 off. So pretty good savings when you're talking about, you know, high dollar electrical items. Our code ADVENTURE5, it's good for anything on continuousresources.com except for their solar panels. And we did use their solar panels, their high-tech 200 watt solar panels. Now they have a new version, 210 watts, and they're the same dimensions. So in our electrical diagram, you won't see our exact solar panels and our exact batteries, what I've done in there. I put in the new 210 watt solar panels, which are better and the 310 amp hour batteries because that's all you can get from VMAX. When we were building our van, we sourced almost all the electrical items from continuousresources.com and they're super helpful answering any questions you have about all the products that they stock. We recently became affiliate partners with Continuous Resources and we do get a small kickback if you use our code, which we're super thankful for. But we've honestly been recommending them since day one. They helped us so much when we were building our solar and electrical system. We got a ton of parts from them and they were always really helpful via email to answer all of our questions. So check them out. Now on to more of the nitty gritty about all the appliances and how we use our electrical system. So how does this system perform in real life? Well, we're getting pretty hungry. I'm about to cook lunch and I'll show you in real time how many amp hours that uses. Our batteries are at 100% right now. So let's go check that out. <laughs> Today is a sunny March day in Colorado and we're seeing about 34 amps from our solar panels. We've got some rice going and I'm about to do veggies and chicken in this pan. So that way we'll use both stovetops and we'll use the full 250 amp draw and show you what that looks like. 
Our dual radiant stovetop is the highest draw of any appliance in our van. The small burner is 1200 watts, the large burner is 1500 watts. And so together 2700 watts plus a little bit of inefficiencies. That's why we needed a 3000 watt inverter to run both at the same time. And they draw about 250 amps when they're both on. All right, now we're gonna eat lunch, but before we do, as you saw on the battery monitor, that meal took only about 25 amp hours to cook. And that's because over that 40 minutes, the solar panels were recharging it pretty well uh, today. A lot of other times, especially in the winter, it'll be mostly a draw on the batteries with not much recharging, especially if you're cooking dinner at night. So this was a best case scenario. Um, we'll talk more about what our solar system does in the winter. Now that we're done with lunch, we're gonna go for a mountain bike ride. And when we get back, we're gonna need showers. So at that point, I'm gonna turn on our four gallon Bosch hot water heater and show you how many amp hours it takes to get fully hot. All right, let's go. back from our bike ride and now it's time to turn on the hot water heater for a shower. So you can see that our batteries are at 100%, 349 amp hours, and they're only getting 1.7 amps of solar because they're full. So uh, you can see the solar is making 3.3 amps right there at the bottom of the solar display. But when I turn on the hot water heater, turn on the inverter, and then flip on the hot water heater. You can see that now the hot water heater is pulling negative 83, 84 amps. But it's actually pulling more than that because now the solar is pulling 36 amps. So it's offsetting a little bit of that. So you can add 36 to 84 and that's the total amps that the hot water heater pulls. But we'll see how many amp hours we lose when the hot water gets fully hot. Okay, the hot water is fully hot. I'm gonna turn off the hot water heater and check out what happened. So it took it down to 294 amp hours. So it used 55 amp 56 amp hours were 85 percent of usable amp hours and that was with the solar charging that middle bottom number above 30 amps the whole time so it would have taken a lot more if this was at night or something like that and the total elapsed time for the four gallon bosch hot water heater to fully heat was 35 minutes so essentially, you know, it's 1440 watts times 35 minutes, and you can calculate the amp hour usage no matter what batteries you have. Now, the other interesting data that this battery monitor shows is that two hours and 13 minutes on the right side, that's how long it'll take the batteries to get back to 100% if they continue charging at 24.4 amps. Of course, that'll go down as the evening progresses, but uh, should have 100% battery by sundown. All right, so as you can see, our major appliances take a lot of amps to run, and our solar does a pretty good job of keeping up with charging them day after day. As long as there's good sun, and as long as it's not the middle of winter and the sun is like basically on the horizon. But if our system was any smaller, it really wouldn't keep up with day after day use especially in the winter. So what happens when we do get low on battery, when we do get a week of rain, or when it's winter time and every day you get five or six hours of low sun? That's when an alternator charger, also called a battery isolator, really comes in handy. Since our entire system relies on electricity, no sun would equal no power if we were just reliant on solar. So that's why it's key to have a secondary source of electrical charging. We use the Battery Doctor battery isolator and it pumps up to 80 amps into the batteries from the alternator. And so as long as we drive, you know, an hour or two per day, that really helps the solar keep up with the battery charging, especially in the winter. Sometimes even the battery isolator has not been enough to keep up in the middle of winter. 
uh, when we're cooking a lot and when we're staying in one place like in Sedona or Moab and not driving very much just to a trailhead. The alternator is not on long enough to charge the batteries. Maybe it's rainy for a week and there's just no charging power happening. We do also keep a backpacking butane stove and we've used that in the middle of winter just to make it so we don't have to rely on our stovetop the whole time. And then that plus turning on the van for an hour and allowing the alternator to run really helps keep the solar system and the electrical system fully charged even in the dead of winter. But all this to say that this huge system still does not keep things 100% in the winter with day after day full-time van life use. So really you think it's huge, but it's, it's just good enough. It's what we need. And here's a tip we learned about our battery doctor battery isolator. What we would do originally is turn on our hot water heater while we drove, thinking that, okay, while we're driving, it'll offset the amps that the water heater is drawing and we'll get to camp and we'll have hot water and full batteries. Well, we would get to camp and our batteries would be really low and we're like, why weren't they charging? Uh, I tested the battery doctor to see if it was working correctly and it was. What we figured out is that with the huge amp draw from the hot water heater, the battery doctor was cutting off the circuit to our van, our house batteries in order to protect the van starter battery because it was, you know, thinking that the starter battery was getting so low with that big draw. So now what we do is we turn on the hot water heater so it gets fully hot before we drive anywhere. Then we turn it off. That way while we're driving, it can recharge and we do end up at camp with a full charge again. At this point, you're probably bored to tears with all this electrical jargon and technical specifications. So I won't drone on anymore. In the video's description, we have many helpful resources that are much more useful than this video. And if you wanna ask any questions, please do so in the comments. First of all, download our brand new electrical wiring diagram, which shows our entire solar and electrical system and how it all connects together. We also have a free parts list PDF that lists every item in the electrical system and every single item in our entire van build. And you can download that at the description or visit accidentadventure.com slash vanlife dash blog. And everything is there as well. While you're on our website, you might also be interested in our solar panel roof rack build guide that shows you how to build a DIY unistrut rack on a Ram Promaster or really any van because it's so adaptable. And before I sign off, don't forget about saving 5% at continuousresources.com with code ADVENTURE5. If you'd like to follow along with all of our adventures, please subscribe here on YouTube and also check out our Instagram at Acts of Adventure. Thanks so much. See you soon.